Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing HY's smallest spindle connector, and that's the H17. I don't know if she can get that on camera. We are shooting in 4K with the Canon M50. Um, but this is a an actual client's connector. You can see here he's got a little drop of solder. I guess he must have attempted uh, to do this himself and just figured out, you know what, I really don't want to get involved with this. And he contacted me and you can see that this connector is much different than the black connector I've had in previous videos and also the large HY connector. And what makes it so different and tedious to work with is the housing that the connector screws into. And I'm just going to make everybody aware of this because it's very interesting to see how this works. You can see this housing has been completely opened up and machined by hand, by myself. You can see everything is polished out. Everything is now set to accept the proper double shielded 16 gauge cable. This can easily be done, pending you're familiar with using a Dremel tool and understanding the end mills that are required to do this. Once again, this is a hand operation. This is not something that's gonna be done with an air grinder. This is more precision than anything else. My Dremel's right here. Here's the actual tool itself, if you're not familiar with it, and you apply the end mills in there just like you would a spindle, and you remove and clean out and bore out the appropriate materials so that we can get a proper fit with this actual cable. And I get asked all the time, you know, why is this so much more money than your other spindle cables? And the, the answer to that question is there is a lot more work involved. Um, if you look at this connector, this is all done by hand. I have to do three tool changes. I have to go through, make sure everything is symmetrical, make sure there's no burrs. And the idea here, again, I'm using a sample piece of cable. You can see how easy this goes and inserts now. And you can also see right here the clearance we have. And once again, when this cable is fully assembled, this is filled with my ED704, which is a, an electrical silicone, and it basically molds and becomes part of the cable. And we do that again to seal this connector from moisture as much as possible. Now, um, if you attempt to do this yourself, keep in mind, um, just like me, because I'm no different than you, if I go to machine this and I screw it up, guess what, guys? I have to buy another connector, just like you do. So when guys say to me, you know, why is it so expensive? Now you know why because I do not have room for error, nor do you. If you screw this up, and this is not soldered properly, and you don't know how to do the cups, and you've never worked with cups like this, you can see the proximity, you can see how they're laid out, you're gonna have issues. And that's why I'm doing more videos on connectors, because I want you guys just to be aware, before there's any surprises of you purchasing a spindle from China, of what you're actually dealing with. The spindle itself, naturally, is cheaper because you're buying direct. But that being said, you are taking ownership of everything that comes with that spindle. So if you're not familiar with assembling this connector, regardless of the cable you choose, which must be double shielded 16 gauge, I get this question all the time, guys wanna use 18 gauge. You need to use 16 gauge cable to support the amps that these spindles require. And that's best safety practice. So again, totally up to you. I highly recommend the 16 gauge. And double shielding is uh, imperative because we want to use double shielded cables so we mitigate both EMI frequencies. There's a high and a low frequency. And with double shielding, you've got the mylar foil and the tin braided copper, which mitigates them both. So again, you can see here how this actually screws in. And you'll see this when you actually order your spindle. How this actually is machined or actually is threaded, screws in. And you have to measure the appropriate amount of cable to remove. I see guys remove it way back. I see them, you know, whatever works for you. I don't like to do that. I try to stay, once again, well within spec of actually only removing what's required for the stress relief, which is right here. I've had guys say, well, the cable, you know, you may not be able to get the cable to fit. And that's not accurate because if you look right here, that cable fits in there perfect. As a matter of fact, you got clearance. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that okay? In the camera? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, you can see the clearance we have there. And again, it's just a matter of understanding the tools that are required to do the job. And you can see just, if you've seen this connector pre-machined, this is all solid metal. I've removed everything. I've went, went through with a Shaviv. I've deburred everything. This is all by hand, using my trusty Dremel. And coming in here, polishing this out, going over with the proper grits of sandpaper, coming over here, refinishing this, once again, making sure there's no burrs, and that's what you'll get. You can also see the edge here. This is all nicely done. This way we make sure that when the cable's inserted, 
we get a nice ridge line for our client. Okay, that's what we're aiming to do. So again, it's tedious work, and that's why I charge what I do. It takes me time, and again, when I say takes me time, I can usually bang out one end of the cable with this particular end now in about 50 minutes. Now, when I say that, I have guys say, well, you're, you know, don't be cocky about how fast you can do things. I'm certainly not being cocky. I'm just letting you guys know. I'm doing this every day. If you've never done this, don't think for a minute it's as easy as it looks because it certainly isn't. And I'm being totally honest with you. And until you've attempted it, you'll figure it out. But the overall goal here, and I wanted you to see what these look like when they're done so that they do accept the cable and how they should look so everything is nice and symmetrical. And on top of that, you don't have any issues with burrs. And we don't have any catches. And again, all the heat shrink will be done uh, prior to installation. But you guys then can determine just where you want to go with this, okay? Uh, I am having a new cable release uh, very shortly because I've had a lot of requests from my larger corporations on different types of cable and I wanted to get one that basically suit everybody. Um, it's way more advanced and when I say way more advanced, uh, in a lot of characteristics. It's higher voltage rated. Uh, all the leads have symmetrical colors in terms of what uh, normal corporations are using now. Uh, its flexibility rating is much higher. Um, it's just got a whole bunch of different additives done to it uh, using a different PVC formulative that's actually closer to a pure rating, which is uh, used pretty much throughout the industry. Um, it'll be released shortly, um, but in the meantime, Showing this process is irrelevant of what cable you use. This is imperative for this connector because once again, if this is solid metal, you have no choice but to remove all that. And you have to do it carefully because once again, we wanna make sure there's no burrs and we wanna make sure that the cable actually fits. The other factor is, is that once you've soldered everything and this all goes to be inserted, this comes up naturally, this will ride up the cable once this has heat shrink over it and you have to come in here and make sure that you're able to thread this on. And that's the other factor a lot of guys don't, don't really think about. And that's why they typically cut the cable way back so that they have no interference from the PVC casing. They simply worry about uh, you know, getting the cable attached. But if you don't have PVC casing where you should, right here where the stress relief is, that's where these screw holes are to hold the stress relief, essentially you're gonna have a cable that's not supported there. So you've got to be careful with these connectors for safety and you want them to provide the longevity you're looking for. So again, um, I wanna keep the video as short and sweet as possible. I think I've made my point and you guys can see just exactly what kind of detail you're working with. When this screws in, just so we're aware of one more other point, when this screws in, keep in mind this will be over the cable like this and you have to rotate the cable and screw this on for proper engagement. Okay, and any guy that's done it will tell you whether, whether you skin the cable way back, whether you stay nice and tight like I like to do and stay nice within that stress relief rating, you're still going to have to do that. So make sure you take your time, make sure you really analyze every piece of this puzzle because believe me, it is a puzzle if you've never done it. And you can see, once you get everything lined up, you're good. And just to let everybody know, I even have the mail end because when I assemble my cables, I validate everything for engagement. I don't take a gamble and say, oh, I'm going to take this guy's money and just, you know, hope that everything locks in as far as the actual screw lock. Everything has got to be validated, you know, and I do that imperatively because you have your spindle. So if you're building it yourself, it's right there. I may not have that model in-house at that particular moment. So therefore, I carry everything, everything. And that's, that's the factor we have to keep in mind. When I say I carry everything... You can see exactly what I'm talking about with this. Um, I'm going to do some um, future videos with some hardware. I'll show you guys my printer uh, just to show you guys exactly the extension of what we're looking at here in hardware. But overall, you get the gist of how this is done. I think you definitely understand now how the machining should be done. This is what it basically should look like. And again, I keep a sample test piece of cable because once again, that's how I use it to test everything. This is not rocket science when it comes to this, but it is precision in the sense that we're looking for repeatability. And you should get a repeatable fit. You can see how that is. Just Like I said, there's no burring either. I always look to see if there's any marring. As I rotate the, the uh, cable inside there, I look for any type of marring because I realize, like I explained to you, once I go to insert this, I have to rotate it. The last thing I want to do is scratch up and mar all of the cable. That's not what we're intending to do because if you actually... Uh, compromise the external PVC casing, 
you're basically limiting the cable, and we try definitely not to do that. So again, that's overall what we're looking to do. And you guys now can see, I think it's really evident of, you know, I've spent a lot of time practicing, because believe me, when I tell you, I've gone through many of these connectors, and unfortunately, just like you, there is no, uh, there's no mastery in the sense of being able to salvage these. If you screw it up, it's screwed up. And believe me, I've had many, many uh, potential and past clients both tell me they've screwed them up. So please take your time. Again, guys, if you have any questions, if you require consultations, I get a lot of guys, I'm telling you right now, and I know many people think I'm just saying this to make money, and I'm really not, if you really think about it. And, and I mean, really take some time to think about it. If you ask me in a consultation, do you think, <clears throat> I'm, I've never done this before, do you think this is something I should attempt? I'm going to really probe your brain as far as, have you used the Dremel in this capacity? Have you done fine machining and, you know, understand the end mills that you're using? I mean, you know, rotary files, different types of sanding drums, different diameters, and then we come over here to different polishing discs, so we make sure we get the finish just right. Now, again, you could say I'm being picky or I'm just trying to do it to where... I don't have my client ever worry about the installation of the cable, but these are things to think about. You know, sometimes it's better to pay that money up front, and then even if you buy the cable from me, I'm going to give you a discount anyways. So sometimes that makes sense. If you have any other questions that are just general questions, of course, send them too. But I get guys that more or less want to go into full detail, and that's where, you know, sometimes setting up a consultation in the long run is going to save you money anyways. So it's just stuff to think about. You know, again, I'm dealing with this every day. I mean, most guys that are looking at this realize, the guys that have done it know, just by looking at this, this isn't my first rodeo. I mean, you could see the, the finish on that. There's no joke here, and that's all done by hand. So, again, I hope the video has been helpful. Um, I will put links in both the beginning of the video. You'll see a link to contacting me uh, directly, and also a link at the end. You'll see it, uh, again, below, either through uh, direct email, storm2313 at gmail.com, or you can contact me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. Thank you guys all for your support. I hope the video has been helpful. Take care.